Hi, uh, I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci. And uh, what I want to talk about uh, today, just sort of to get a conversation going, is something that I recently discovered, and that is uh, the manufacture valve Fourier. Uh, actually, this began in 2005. Hi, DG. And the what I found out really surprised me. <laughs> My ignorance surprised me more than anything else. Um, what it is is that what Richemont did back then was to was to set up a manufacturing vertical manufacturing system for all of its watches, all of its watch companies. And so I started looking around and I started uh, uh, finding these. And so, you know, I thought, well, this is, this is, this is pretty interesting. I, uh, 2005, this thing has been going on for 13 years and uh, probably something I ought to find out about. So I started looking into it and a number of watches have their um uh hey Zabber. um the a number of, of watches have their movements made by this and and have had it um <laughs> should you or should you okay hello atlanta um the and and there's a big discussion about in-house movements versus getting movement from somewhere else. And you have a similar situation with Parmigiani, where you have Vosher that's part of a vertical um, organization that they have for watchmaking. But here's one that's sort of part of the biggest watchmaking group next to Swatch and uh, Rolex in the world, and that's uh, Richemont. So I thought, well, you know, it'd be, it would be something to kick around. I'd like to do a, um, uh, a video on it. Hi, Belfast. Um, and so anyway, so this thing I was going to, I was going to kick around. Uh, first of all, let me see if I can explain how it's set up. Um, any, any kind of vertical organization in a, in a larger context means that you have one company that takes care of one thing, another company that takes care of something else, and another company that takes care of something else. Hi, Peter. Hi, Liverpool. And the, um, so anyway, that, that's what I thought. Well, we'll talk about it. And any, any ideas and comments you have, I'd like to hear. Um, no, well, first of all, like I said, it was probably a little before, um, 2005. In fact, it was back in the 1990s. Well, uh, when um, Richemont had some other name, I forgot what it was, and then they they said, "Well, we're we're going to have to set up some kind of vertical organization for making our own movements." And hi there, Stifle. Um And oh, where's Watch Check? Uh, this is my uh, H Moser uh, Henry Double Hair Spring. Love it. <laughs> I love them all. Um, yeah, I was just commenting to, to, to Jobber is that, have you ever made a bid on a watch and hope you don't get it? Because <laughs> what am I buying that for? So you put in a low bid and <laughs> they say, okay. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> some of, you know, some really nice watches I got that way at a really great price, but anyway, oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one <laughs> that says, Oh, please don't accept it. I'm trying to save up for my laying and hind. <laughs> I keep seeing things. All right. Um, let me get back to this. I'm going to turn this one off. Getting, looks like I'm being interrogated. Um, uh, this, is, this will be okay. A little too much. Little. I, I, I think it's my lighting here today. We've got a storm going outside, and it's really... I mean, pretty good. I have the side window open because there's nothing but clouds, so I'm not going to get burned up. Okay, hi, John. You haven't missed anything. I'm just talking about manufacture valve Fourier, something I didn't know about. 
by Don. And um, so anyway, how they sort of set it up, and, they, and they've actually had it going since 2005. Now, I think, hi, Eddie, I think that the first one they did was for Panerai. I think it's a P2000 was the first one that they actually made. And so the way it's set up, they have the, um, the uh, research and development are in uh, New Chatel. And then they have the production and the machining in Boots. And then they have the finishing and decoration in La Cura Free. And the, in La Cura, uh, La Cura Free is where Piaget is. Well, Piaget is owned by uh, Richemont. And so they, it's co-located with it. Um, Eddie, the topic is of uh, manufacturer Val Fourier. This is Richemont's uh, manufacturing vertical organization. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I probably should have put that up, but I forgot to. Anyway, when I mentioned this, this was something I, it's sort of like, I discovered this and thought, man, I should have known about this. Um, Federico, I didn't realize this, Federico worked for Richemont for four years, I think. And uh, he seemed to know all about it. So it, it, it's really very interesting. Um, when you, if, if you, if you go to watch base.com where they have the movements, they talk about the movement. Um, what you'll see is, um, you'll see some reference to Val Fluier. And they have two different spellings of it. One is two words, Val and then Fluier, the name of the town or one of the towns, I guess it must be nearby, uh, I think uh, New Chatel is. And, and then you have the, uh, it's also spelled with one word, sort of a camel case with vowel and then Fourier in capital. And it, it's spelled a lot of different ways, but, it, but it's something I think it's like, it's, it's like finding ETA, but they're, you don't see their name on any of the movements. And instead you see uh, the P for Panerai or the uh, MB for uh, Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc is another one that they have done things for, but it's it, it's sort of hard to to nail things down. One of the other uh, customers is IWC, and, I, and I'll tell you something that's sort of interesting. In the 2018 SIHH, um, IWC announced a uh, Portuguese um, chronograph. Okay, nothing new. They've got chronographs. Hi, BB. Um, and the, the, they, they have a, an earlier one and it had an ETA 7, uh, 7750 running it. Okay. And it's, uh, reference number 3714. And then they, uh, came out with in just, just last uh, SIHH show, they came out with one at 3716. Now, the, the, the difference is this, is that for the 3714, the asking price is um, 7605 euro. And then for the 3716, it's 8100 euro. Okay, now 500 euro is, is not a huge difference, but it, but it is a difference. And this is one of the things, okay, so why is in-house why they charge more for in-house if it's not any better? <laughs> well, um, that is what I was sort of wanted to kick around with you guys is, is at the start this, but I'm going to go into a lot more detail in, in uh, one of my uh, uh, Friday or Sunday videos. And um, But I wanted to get some, um, first of all, any of you familiar with uh, any of the uh, Val Fourier movements? You may be and don't even know it. <laughs> so could I. Uh, but they're, they're basically making movements for certain, I don't think all of them, uh, uh, some companies that they own uh, already have their own movement uh, development. I believe uh, PSJ has it, uh, Vacheron Constantin, uh, Jacha Lacoutre. So um, they, I don't think theirs are made by Val Fourier. And 
And one of the best things that ever happened, I think, that EPA did and then tried to undo was telling non-swatch companies that, hey, we're not, uh, we're, we're not going to be selling you um, ibosis anymore. You're going to have to go out and make your own movement. And so they did. <laughs> and with all of the watch companies that are part of, of um, uh, Richemont, there's that's a lot of watch companies that are going to have to be developing it. And the companies like Mont Blanc, which is really a fountain pen company, and they're changing. I'll tell you another one I saw that was really interesting was um, um, Ralph Lauren. My God, uh, you know, to me, Ralph Lauren uh, watches were nothing but a, a fashion watch. They'd throw in, you know, they'd throw in quartz, they'd throw in whatever, you know, whatever tick form. But I was, uh, uh, I found a movement uh, that was made by Val Fleurier that was used by Ralph Lauren. And I'm not sure if, they, if it was also used by Panerai or some other ones or, oh, or IWC. Oh, that's another thing you see. You see some things that were, oh, this is an IWC. The base of this is an IWC. And then you read on and say, well, the base of that IWC is a uh, ETA 770 or uh, 7750 or something like that. And so, uh, but they're, they're really Val Fleurier. Uh, they, they, I, I think it's probably, if you have to look for parallels, it's probably closer to um, Parmigiani and Vacher. But, I, but Vacher at this time uh, it will, is making really very good movements, not only for Parmigiani, but the ones they make for Parmigiani is with uh, Mito. Uh, Parmigiani says, "Okay, this is this is the here's the design for the movement. Um, go ahead and go ahead and, and uh, uh, it's what we want." And Lasher does. On the other hand, I, some of the uh, Parmigiani movements are used. I mean, what I what I call off the um, air mass. They're used by um, oh, what's the name of that one? Forgot what the what the name of the other one was, but these but now these companies you they 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 take an off the shelf washer and fix it and the so it, it it's sort of a interesting kind of thing going on that is a little different from what's on with um, uh, Ralph Fleurier manufacturer Ralph Ralph Fleurier. Um, Okay, Ralph Lauren also uses a movement by PAJ. Well, chances are <laughs> that PAJ, see, the thing is, is that um, Val, uh, manufacturer Val Fleurier has its, its uh, finishing and decoration co-located in um, uh, La Cuda Free with PAJ. So <laughs> that was, uh, they may have, um, you know, they may just take an off the shelf uh, uh, Piaget too. Piaget is a, is a watch company I don't know that much about and I'd like to learn more. So um, I like watches, got some information on that, really interested in it. But see, the thing of it is, is it may, both Piaget and the Ralph Lauren may be part of the, uh, this vertical organization that, uh, that has all of the, all of the wherewithal uh, for the R and D, for the manufacturer, uh, the manufacturer where they're actually putting everything together is in is in um, is in boots, and then they then I guess they ship them all over to um, uh, La Cura C, where they do the <laughs> where they do the decoration and the finishing. I don't know, and I, I you know I. I throw them in the back of a red pickup truck for all I know and haul them over there. I'm not sure what the what the distances are uh, in, in Switzerland. Anything else you guys, uh, what do you think about that? Is that, I mean, so, you know, why not just keep your ETAs and put those in your IWCs and so forth? And I think, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the reason they really kicked it into high gear 
isn't because of the sort of like, oh, well, we don't, we don't exactly trust uh, watches uh, that don't have uh, ETA movement in it. Hello? Anybody there? <laughs> Nobody's interested. In Hi, John. Yeah. Okay, John. Yeah, I I feel the same way that John does. They have high high quality movement. Who cares? I I really agree with that. I know that um, one of my um, my 1972 um, Vacheron Constantin, which was the second model that they made between 1999 and 2013, has a Frederick uh, Piguet in it. Hi, Rudy. Um, so anyway, that's, that's sort of the, uh, trying to figure out is that, all right, well, uh, here we have this, um, uh, we're using ETAs and, and a lot of people, you know, they swear by ETAs. They think they're, they're great. And, um, okay. Yeah. You're right, John, about, uh, the wicks. Yeah. They're highly decorated and they're probably highly uh, modified too. I, I think, yeah. Some of the DeWitts, uh, I was looking at one that uh, was really, really something. One of the things about DeWitts, <coughs> excuse me. One of the things about DeWitts is that oftentimes, in, in models and watches like DeWitt, nobody knows anything about them or anything, and they can have some really nice movements in them. And but since nobody wants them, then they, you can get them for really cheap prices. Um, and one of the uh, that's a good example, uh, the H Moser, the H Mose double hairspring, uh, and some of the other ones, they just didn't do that well. And uh, you can pick them up for or used to be able to now that all of I, I saw this one I wanted, but. All of the one I me and my big mouth, I said, Oh, you know, these are great deals. You go to this place, they have really wonderful deals. Well, apparently, <laughs> they're all gone. <laughs> so, except there's this one, one uh, double hairspring left. So, okay. Uh, IWC is one of the most, uh, I know, I know. Yeah, they have, uh, see, this is uh, Rudy's point about, yeah, they are deceptive. I, you know, and they say, Okay, yeah, this is our, this is what we call it. This is how we modified the movement from an ETA, and we call it the IWC XYZ, okay? And this is why they say, well, ETAs are just as good, but, but we're not going to tell you that we're using them. <laughs> they say, oh, well, wait a minute, it does not compute. Uh, so, but what they're doing here with, with this um, uh, manufacturer Val Fourier is they're saying, okay, now this is sort of a richemont movement making vertically organized thing that they make movements with. And the ones that I've seen, they're okay. I mean, they're, they're sort of between the kind of quality you see in the Bosher and the kind that you see in ETA. Uh, but when I saw this one that was, um, was made for, or it was made for IWC, I think, and used by Ralph Warren, they covered it all up and they got these great big plates on it. And, and if you look at, um, if you look at a watch company that wants to show off their movement, it's, it's something that they do by, um, by having a, you know, showing it off. Uh, all of my, most of my watches, I got one that doesn't and they don't show it off because they're hiding a pay zoo. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this guy right here, that's a double hairspring, a uh, uh, Henry double hairspring. Fantastic watch. And uh, they're showing off their thing. When this came out, though, this was, this was not a popular watch. Uh, but the, the concept uh, and the, the functioning of double hairspring on this one was, was fantastic. It worked. It was a concept that was for um, a constant what do they call that, uh, constant force. And a double hairspring worked because it helped keep the, um, keep the, the center of the, uh, uh, well, what's it called, the center of the balance wheel. 
center. And instead of moving around because of the torque going in one direction, with the opposite direction. Still, wasn't popular. So uh, there's some deals on it, but then something happened, I guess. Well, it was also very expensive to produce and something changed. And so suddenly um, each Moser is, has them in limited editions in their uh, Swiss Alps model. They're going to have 20 a year and they're charging 32,000 bucks a piece for them. Uh, hey, that's not what I paid. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I like watches. Didn't the older IWCT movement use to be totally rebuilt and modified in house? I think they just get them from I, IWC uh, Salida and swap them in. I don't know. I, they could be. Like I said, they have, you know, the difference. They have 500 uh, between the new one, the, the model 3714 and 3716. The, the uh, 3714 has the EPA. Uh, 7750 or uh, the Salida equivalent of that, whereas the new one has, let me see the caliber, boy, this is, they got the long caliber number, 69355. Now, that whole thing was uh, perhaps designed by IWC, but everything else on it was put together by um, um, Val Fleurier. And, and that's why uh, it's, it's sort of fun to find out about this. I mean, they've been around since 2005. I just heard about them this week, <laughs> which is, you know, put me behind there. But how come people don't talk about it? I, you, you hear good grief, uh, just about every forum and discussion, you're going to hear about EPA talking about it. And so we, uh, and then in-house. And, and Vasher, uh, and maybe Soprod, and maybe a few other ones that people know about. Um, but, um, but this is interesting. This is really interesting stuff. Um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, the, what do I have? I have, it, 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 it's been really hot and muggy, uh, and a thunderstorm going outside, but uh, my wife, cooled off the house so much they have to put on a sweatshirt so I don't freeze. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what uh, two to three watches are you researching for a positive purchase? Man, I was just talking about that. <laughs> Having a little discussion about, well, which ones am I um, I'm looking at? The one that I really want is a Lang and Hein. Um, the Lang and Hein Frederick uh, III is want in in terms of something I have to save up for. But during that period uh, of saving for that watch, I got this one, which I'm very happy with. I got this uh, Maurice Lacroix that turned out to be about 10 times better than I realized. <laughs> I, I got lucky. Uh, and so, but that's, it's that Lang and uh, the, the Lang and the uh, Hine that I really want. Uh, I mean, that, that's, that, you know, it, with, with watches, the kind of watches I like, uh, this was one of my favorite, my um, uh, Beauvais. It, it, it's not just because it's different, it's well made, it's got everything about it, it's everything I like in a watch, and it's different and fun to have. Uh, but rather, it, it's sort of like, okay, well, well, what do you need in your collection? And the ones I like are the ones that have really good craftsmanship. This is why I like this uh, H. Moser. I like my F.P. Jorns. Um, I think what else? My, um, oh, my uh, 1968 uh, Pedet. It, so, it, so what, I, what I'm looking for, um, uh, John, is, is that it's, I like usually what I can afford. Put it that way. Uh, I mean, like you know, you, I could get in line um, for a um, oh uh, Roger Smith. But two things stopping me. <laughs> There's about a twenty-year waiting list, and and I don't have a hundred thousand bucks, <laughs> so that may have that may have to may have to wait. Um. um Okay, let's see what else is going on. Um, yeah, Rudy will get the Roger Smith. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Rudy. 
don't ever look the other way if I'm around that Roger Smith. <laughs> Keep your eye on it. Uh, yeah, that 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 is a uh, that's an amazing watch. See, the thing is, though, is that there are other watchmakers and other brands where you can get that craftsmanship type of quality. And probably for an individual one, I think F.P. Jean. Now, I think I had a thing not too long ago, a video on that. And that the uh, the starting point or the entry level is so high. I mean, it's a $20,000 to knock on the door. And that's getting pre-owned. And um, that to me, though, I mean, what I get, you know, if you have like, uh, you could probably get what uh, three Rolexes, okay? So I said, well, I could have three little Rolexes. Mm-hmm. You could. That's exactly right. Would you rather have three Rolexes or one FP Jorn? Well, my choice would be FP Jorn. Other people would rather have three Rolexes. It's, it's, it's that kind of uh, it's that kind of decision. Um. Oh boy. Uh, talking about uh, DGB, Baskin Rudy, about H. Moser and Deborah Perpetual. That's another one I really like. Um, and um, yeah, Lang and F.P. Jorn. Now, A. Langa. Okay, there's Lang and Heim, and there's A. Langa. Uh, they're both really good, but I. The, the to me the difference is this is that Marco Lang L A N G without the E is the craftsman that is and some of the stuff they put in there uh, in their watches is you can see the craftsmanship just like you can see it in a um, you can see it in this Beauvais I mean when you the, 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 there's a watch that the thing was designed along with the movement from the ground up, the case size, the movement size, everything. Everything fits beautifully in that. And that's the kind of watch I really like. And you can see the craftsmanship. Now you say, okay, well, uh, you know, what's the resale value? I don't know. I don't buy them to resell them. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to um, manufacturer Val Fourier. Uh, okay. Okay, I like watches. You're fed up with Rolexes. All right, all right. Okay, the Rolexes, I guess. Um, um, okay, Johnny, why does Bill not own a JLC? Because I, I have one, but it, I bought it for my wife. Uh, and uh, she loves it. I love it. We're very happy with it. Sometimes I can't have a watch, so I've got one for my wife. <laughs> so then I have it that way. Um, she's got, I mean, like, her Beauvais is really beautiful. I mean, uh, I love mine more than anything, uh, but hers is, is a little fancier <laughs> by far. So, um, okay, Rudy loves his Casio. R- Rudy, no, those are good for when you are when you become a hooligan at soccer matches. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I, 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 I like those too. I mean, uh, what are these? I, I keep forgetting the name of it. Shockwave or Casio something shock. Um, a friend of mine has one. <laughs> he got, when he was in England, he picked it up. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm no Illuminati. Just kidding, Rudy. Okay. Um, Let's talk about this. What other watches do you know that had a movement of by Val Fourier? Any, any ones you guys know of? Now, let me write it down. I can write something down here, I think. And it's called And it could be uh, more recently. I've seen it uh, spelled with the, the without the space in between it. And I've also seen the name. I think it's called Man.
um, if a 70s paddock fully needs to update to the 70s paddock fully. You know, the ones from the 70s were really quite good. The Paddock Police were. I mean, they're excellent watches. I think the ones from the 60s are too. Um, yes, F.P. Jorn. Man, that is, I love those watches. F.P. Jorn watches. Um, um, Matt, uh, Matt has them. Uh, oh, I tell you, the, the collection of F.P. Jorns that is weepable are the ones that um he was 74 has my god what a collection that is and that's the just of the fp joint not to mention everything else there's another uh just a fabulous collection rudy's got a great collection this sunday by the way this sunday um there's a very surprising collection i got i got the sense that that'll be a surprise and believe me, it's not like any of the other collections we've had so far, and it's really an excellent one too. So that's that's on tab for uh, Sunday. L and H, you bet. <laughs> that's right. L and H all the way. I gotta focus. That's my problem. I keep you know, looking here, looking there. Uh, somebody was trying to talk me into a, a brigade, which I really liked, but got to focus on the uh, Lang and Hein. <laughs> okay, uh, what were you wearing when you shot uh, <laughs> JFK? Um, very funny. Uh, actually, it was probably an Accutron. Uh, I used to have an Accutron uh, uh, during that time. Yeah. Oh man, I tell you, there are um, so many, so many great watches out there. I keep finding new ones every day. Uh, today I found one. Um, my wife stepped out. So I can talk, but, and this is going to be recorded. Thank God she doesn't watch my things. I found one. I put I put a low bid on one, and I'm now I'm hoping. Oh, I hope they don't accept my bid. I mean, like really low, and. I've, I've done that before and got the watch. I mean, like, I'll put in 50% of the asking price and they'll sell it to me. Oh, no. What did they do that for? I'm trying to save up for a Lang and Hein. Well, I did it again today. I put in a bid for one I really like. But then I was thinking, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, Jabra, there are some super nice FP Jorn on Instagram. By the way, uh, yesterday was the last day to enter the FP Jorn um, contest. Uh, every year they have a contest. Last year I had a picture of my, my neighbor. I live next door to uh, goats. And so I had a goat. I'd shown them my watch and the goat was looking at it. And they, they, I didn't win, but they featured that all over the place. This year I don't, I don't think my FP Jorns were so interesting. But what I had to do, every, every picture I took, to enter the contest, I had to put hashtag FPJ contest 2018. So I got all of these uh, ones I put up on uh, Instagram of my um, uh, Chromet uh, Resonant. Uh, it was, I think it's like the 20th anniversary of the Resonant. Yeah, I think it, I think that's what it is. Or the 25th, one of the two, uh, probably the 20th. It's the 20th anniversary. And they were having a big deal about that. Um, Mine is from 2002, and it has the uh, brass uh, plates in the movement instead of gold, and apparently they became rare. Uh, John, yes, FP is on anybody's list. You know, one of the things, this watchmaker who used to be a judge for uh, the Grand Prix Oral of G said that, he said, there aren't any watchmakers who are better than FP John. He said, there, there's some that are, are just as good. And of course, you know, Roger Smith and um, Philippe uh, Dufour and uh, Kerry Wooten Lonnen, basically there aren't any ones that are better, which I thought was really interesting. Now I'm going to say, well, that's not true. Uh, well, that's what I think. You like the shoes? What? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the shoe pictures. 
Right, yeah. You see, this is really funny. When, when you go to look at watch pictures, you see shoes. Um, Matthew, you don't see shoes. You see flip-flops and, and Matt's toes. Um, most overhyped and disappointing watch that you have. Most of my watches, to tell you the truth, are underhyped. Um, boy. You know, I, you know, that's a good question, but I don't have any like that. I really don't. I don't have, this is my, my Raymond Weil that, uh, that I use, I use for, uh, yard work, except, uh, I put a James Bond, um, James Bond NATO on it to make it feel better anyway. But I, I, that's a good question, but I don't have that many. Um, not that are overhyped. I have some that I was a little disappointed in. Um, my uh, El Ara because they put in that uh, pay zoo and started lying to me from the minute I called them in Switzerland. Um, but that's it wasn't overhyped and it's it's a beautiful watch. So I ended up really liking it after all. <laughs> That happened. Um, we can trust that any of these movements are made by who they say they are, and does it really matter? Okay, yes, it does matter. It matters to me. Um, I got to sell a raw. They lied to me. They they said they didn't. I mean, you call a guy at the watch company and you say, "What what kind of movement is there?" Well, we don't know. You don't know what kind of movements in your watch. Uh, if you conceal a watch movement, I can only think of one reason, and is that because you put in a cheap movement. That's the only reason. Now, if somebody says, hey, yeah, we put in a watch, sure, and El Ara had, had used Vosser before, I'd have been happy as a clam. But, you know, to say, oh, we don't know what's in it. So I took it up to my friend, the, the uh, former judge watchmaker. He popped it open <laughs> It's an ETA 7001, which was a Pazoo 7001 before ETA bought it. Hi, I am. Um, so, you know, it, it, these kinds of things that are, you know, that, that we have to deal with. So, yeah, I do think movements are important. If you know what's in it, I don't have a problem with that. Somebody can sell me a movement, a, a watch with an ETA in it. it says here's an IWC Portuguese or this particular model has a ETA 7750 uh, in it. Uh, that's fine, not a problem because I know what I'm buying. What I don't like is is deception, okay? Deception doesn't, that I don't like. Um, okay, that's the only thing I don't like. You know, if, you know, if, if they did this in the automobile industry and, you know, you went and bought a, a Porsche and they put a VW Golf engine in it, you wouldn't be happy. But somehow it seems somehow the watchmakers, at least some of them, think it's okay. And then they give it another name. Uh, and so many of them do it. A lot of the Omegas, while they have the wonderful, um, uh, escapement. They have the uh, the Daniels escapement in it. They they got an ETA movement. But do they tell you that? No. They give it some kind of phony name. Same with Panerai. Same with IWC. Same with Cartier. Before you get a Cartier, it's like opening up a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get off the train. Frank Mueller was notorious for uh, carp movement. Okay, and expensive pieces. Uh, they were Panerai before Panerai. Yeah, uh, Frank Mueller, though, on the other hand, has some really amazing pieces. He's sort of like Ublow. Ublow has got some great watches. They really do. Uh, but they have a reputation. I don't know where they get the reputation from. Uh, most Frank Mueller, I don't care for. But man, I tell you, I saw one today, and they're called the Colors of Something. Just gorgeous. They had the like, enamel numbers on it. Really an amazing looking watch. Um, 
So, you know, they, sometimes a reputation, good or bad, um, is undeserved. Uh, some with bad reputations are very much undeserved. And I know some with good reputations that are also undeserved. They say, oh, this is a wonderful watch. And it's nah. you kind of watch. I, I think the uh, IWC found a famous Portuguese or an Inu or Inu G, whatever it's called. Um, they, oh, these are famous great watches and they're not. And they don't, and they, the thing that bothers me about them so much isn't the fact that they have cheap movements in it. They don't tell you. I mean, if, the, if, if they say, well, we really, we, we really uh, have done uh, a bunch of stuff to it. We modified it. We've made it better and so on and so forth. Okay. That's great too. Just tell me, what did you do to it? I mean, if you, okay, the finishing, we did the finishing, we put in perlage, we put in uh, Geneva waves and so forth. That's, that's nice, but did you really do anything to the movement? In other words, this is a ripster kind of pig. Stole pig. Um, Frank Mueller's a massive complication. Who got tired and sold out. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's exactly. I think that's exactly it. That happened with um, Marin uh, Seat, right? Same thing. He got, for whatever reason, he left his, comp uh, his company. So did um, Gerald Genta, uh, that company. He, for whatever reason, uh, Genta left Gerald Genta. <laughs> or they asked him to leave. I have no idea why. Um, and yeah, that that happened. Um, the on the other hand, you have a company like uh, F.P. Jorn or Booten uh or um, Ferrier, Laurent Ferrier. Uh, Roger Schmidt, uh, those companies without the, the person who, who does those things isn't the same. I know some people who are big Rolex fans, and there's nothing wrong with Rolex, um, but they, they act as though that it's the most important thing. Uh, uh, is it Peter? Right, that's it. Uh, Peter, speak my rent. Thanks, uh, Gatter. Um, they act like the most important thing is that there's going to be a Rolex from now and for eternity. Ah, maybe so. And that's a nice thing. But they say, well, what, what happens when F.P. Jorn dies? I don't know. <laughs> it's that like, oh, boy. Uh, I'll tell you what happened when uh, Pablo Picasso died. His painting shot up in, uh, in value. Same thing with George Daniels' watches. Uh, before George Daniels passed away, uh, his watches were one price. After he died, they were another. So it, it's just, it was also with um, before when he said he's going to quit making watches, but they went up. Okay, is Frank related to Robert Mueller? No, they're not related. No, they're not. Okay, the most hyped watch is... Uh, Paddock Philippe 5711. Rudy, I think you own one of those, so yeah, yeah, yeah you ought to know. Um, I I saw a guy with one on a, on a cruise. Uh, he had a 5711 on. Beautiful watch. I, he never paid any attention to it, but uh, kinda, I, I thought it was a good looking watch. I don't know if it's. Um, it, a lot of these things, you, know, they get, you can't buy one because there's a waiting list for 20 years or something like that. Well, that, that's true with uh, Roger Schmidt, but some of these other ones, you know, they make millions of them a year and they somehow are rare. That was something else, too, uh, that is somewhat related to that, is that the idea of scarcity and scarcity where you have, they're scarce because they're very hard to make. These things, it turns out that they're extremely expensive to make. A guy from uh, H. Moser wrote me and said, well, the reason we quit putting these in, in watches is that the engineering on the things is so expensive that it was very hard to do. And so we're only going to put out 20 a year now. And so that becomes, uh, I, I think, the same thing with um, harboring, too. Here you got, you know. Richard Harbury, his wife, I think, and his dog, and that's the whole company. And they're making these 
really neat watches one at a time. So you have a you have a rarity, and, and then they sell them for you know for very reasonable price. So you have a rarity based on the time quality of making them versus where you see some of these companies that every watch they have they they say it's a limited edition. I saw one that the other day was like that's a limited edition two thousand. Okay. <laughs> It may they'll find 2,000 people like it. Um, okay, Bob, if the 5711 didn't have a paddock on the dial, it'd be selling for half price. I think that's true with a lot of watches. If they didn't have a certain label on it, they might be selling for a lot less than half, too. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah, Rudy, what about a great under the radar watch you have? Well, pain, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathom. Now, that's, a, see, that's the kind of watch that'll get me in trouble. And here's why. I'll be minding my own business, trying to save up for a Lang and Hine. And I'll, I'll see a 50 Fathom and say, hey, I can afford that. And grab that, and there goes my savings sort of laying it high. Um, okay, on underground movements. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, I think I've seen that report. Uh, I like watches on the underground ones. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I, I've seen that. And the underground movements, I think they were talking about, I think Val Fleurier was one of them. And, not exactly underground, just that somehow it never comes up or somebody else has a label on it. Well, listen, uh, I was only supposed to rattle on for half an hour and it's been um, 45 minutes. So I'm gonna have to bow out everybody and thank you all for coming. And I just, it was it's just something I wanted to sort of off the top of my head, I got interested in and anyway, so uh, hope to see you on Friday for the regular, regular kind of thing. Okay, one last one. Why is Parmigiani so cheap uh, on the pre-owned market? Uh, not only on the pre-owned market, on a condition zero market. This is another one that's starting to dry up really quickly. There used to be all of these great deals on Parmigiani at uh, shop warrant. And the only ones left are the ones made of solid gold. <laughs> the other ones got snatched up. I think a lot of people got wise to them. Uh, but uh, Graham, yeah, people people don't now yeah, they they're not popular. Uh, one of the things that I know that uh, some people have accused Parmigiani of is terrible marketing, and that may be true. Instead of paying attention to marketing they're paying their attention to making these these really good watches and i'll take i'll take the uh uh take paying attention to really good watchmaking rather than really good marketing even though i have to admit you know i, I don't want to see uh any watch company you know get in trouble because they're not selling enough watches uh but i'd rather have them spend their resources making excellent watches. 